All right, everybody, welcome back to Sports Sunday. We're going to talk a little soccer with Wizards defender Jimmy Conrad. Back from a productive week, I guess. You guys picked up a couple of points, which the way things are going has to feel pretty good right now. Feels great. Uh, we went to two of the hardest places to play on the road. And we got four points, so winning a tie. So we're very excited about where we stand, and hopefully we can carry this momentum into the Manchester United game this weekend. Offensive struggles have been kind of the problem of late, but you guys got goals in each of your last two games. Do you feel like something is changing? I mean, we've heard Peter Vermes talk multiple times about trying to change maybe different tactics. Has that been the difference so far this week? Yeah, we've made some lineup changes. Uh, I think we put guys in positions that probably suit their skill set a little bit better. Uh, and I think probably the biggest thing is we scored an early goal. Uh, we haven't scored first in I don't know how many games. So it was nice to have the lead and be able to, you know, move tactically in that in that situation. So I think that was the biggest boon to our confidence. And, you know, hopefully, like I said, we can parlay that into a good game against Manchester United this weekend and for the rest of the season. Scoring goals seems to be something I talked to you about for the last, what, three, four years. It seems yeah. like it's been a consistent <laughs> problem. Is it more of a roster thing? Do you guys just maybe not have the firepower the last couple of years? You haven't had that consistent goal-scoring threat game in and game out. Well, I, I like to consider myself a goal-scoring threat. And uh, I don't know if I've been doing pulling my weight as much as I'd like to be. But, no, I think we do. We have the horses. Um, you know, I think we've been a little snake bit in, in some areas. But it, it's hard to argue the stats. And I think over the last few years, we just haven't been putting them in as regularly as we'd like. Of course, i got to put you on a spot because okay. they are talking about a Mexican striker by the name of uh, Omar Bravo. It's somebody that apparently Kansas City in negotiations with. Who is this guy and what do you help you guys? Well, I know he's 30 years old. Uh, he's still got a lot of good soccer in him. He's played for Chivas uh, in Mexico for a number of years on the Mexican national team. I've had the chance to play against him a few times. He's very shifty. He's going to bring um, just a different dynamic to our team. And uh, if we can get him, it'd be a, a huge signing for us and, and hopefully be very exciting for the fans. You guys got a lot of exciting things happening with the Wizards, obviously, building the new stadium. You were a guy who didn't really like playing at Arrowhead. I know you had mentioned to me that before many years ago. Now you have Community America Ballpark. Great, intimate feeling, but... Does it kind of also hurt you guys from an offensive standpoint? Because, again, a small field, they can compact it in. Is it much of a home field advantage considering the way you guys there's, play? There's definitely strengths and weaknesses to both Arrowhead and Community America Ballpark. I think my biggest beef with Community America Ball, or, uh, with Arrowhead was the football lines. Mm -hmm. You know, Once we became second tenants to the Chiefs, it wasn't as fun to play there. And you'd see where all the 300-pound guys would stand because there was dry areas, grass everywhere else except for the 300-pound guys. Uh, with Community America Ballpark, I think you make a good point. I think when we go on the road and play on big fields, uh, it's clear that that uh, when there's a lot more space, we do a lot better. So I, I think we'll be happy uh, come next June when we're in our own digs and in our own new stadium, and hopefully the dimensions will suit our speed. Is that something you guys talk about, this new stadium? Do you drive by it, kind of start lusting after what's going to happen? Yeah, it's exciting um, to be able to finally call a place uh, our own, um, make sure that we're the first tenant, like I kind of mentioned with the Arrowhead Stadium thing, always being second. It's going to be nice to just it being ours, being able to have our own fan section, to be able to have our own locker rooms, and, and to call it our own. So it's very exciting, and uh, I know the ownership group's doing a, a great job to put together one of the best facilities in the nation. All right, thanks to ESPN, this year's World Cup, most watched ever here in America. Obviously, that helps you guys draw some interest, but the question is for how long? In mm -hmm. years past, you've seen the World Cup and then kind of wears out after a couple months. But do you think maybe it could be a little different with how many people that actually watch the World Cup this year? Yeah, I, I think there is going to be a difference. I think the sophistication of the U United States soccer fan is changing. I think there's a different expectation. They want to see a better product on the field, and I think ultimately that's going to put pressure on the owners to invest more in players and more, more into player development and ultimately make our league one of the top leagues in the world. It's going to take time, obviously. I want to make sure that people understand that we're only 15 years old and so we're competing against leagues that have been around for 80 90 years soccer leagues but all, even the leagues in our own country with football baseball and basketball they've been doing it for 70 80 years too so we've got some growing pains to get through but we're working through it and, and i'm very excited about the future of this league perhaps it's perfect timing then that manchester united we see the jersey right behind us right there they're coming into town to play you guys here in a week how good of a club is this, these Europe, top European clubs? I mean, it's a different level, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I uh, would say it's probably one of the top five clubs in the world. Probably one of the most recognizable. Um, they've got an incredible history to their team, and it's going to be a good benchmark to kind of see where we're at and where we need to go and, and how we need to get there. And They played Celtic a few days ago and, and took care of them, no problem, in Toronto. 3-1, uh, it could have been 5-6-1. So it's going to be a good test for us. Uh, it's going to be exciting for our players, especially for this city. I think it's going to be uh, a good test for trying to secure the World Cup bid. You know, So if we can host uh, a, a game of this magnitude that's going to have 50,000 people and, and do it successfully, then I think hopefully we'll get one of the 
you know, one of the games for the World Cup in 2022. I'm kind of speaking ahead of myself, but I think we're going to get the 2022 World Cup. I don't want to make you sound old, but you have been around here for quite a long time. <laughs> Too long. Is this the biggest soccer match maybe in your time here in Kansas City? Oh, without, without a doubt. You know, I know they've had, I think, a World Cup qualifier, qualifier back here yep. in 2001 against mm -hmm. Costa Rica, and, and that had a good turnout. But, I mean, getting a, a team like Manchester United to come to this area is, is a big deal, and it's a credit to our ownership group for having that pull. Uh, to make that happen and yeah this is by far the biggest game that we'll have in this until 2022 when the world cup comes through yeah tell me how much has kansas city changed as a soccer town just in the time you've been here you're about to get i mean it's a new ownership group which is bringing a lot of this on new stadium manchester united possible world cup bid yeah it's incredible it's it's been a big deal and it started with lamar hunt you know he had that vision to, to, to say that kansas city was a soccer town and i know we still have some football and baseball people to win over but uh they'll come along once they come to a game live and they can see what it's about you know hopefully this starting with this game on sunday uh then i think we'll continue to get the fans and you know hopefully have sell it after sell it after sell out once a new stadium opens next year all right manchester united against the wizards sunday night in arrowhead good luck to you jimmy i think you're gonna need it right yeah we'll see we'll <laughs> see i think we'll uh it's a different kind of game. You know, there's no league pressure on it, so it's going to be great. We're going to rise to the occasion. So I'll, I'll take your luck, but I don't know if we'll need it. All right. Jimmy Conrad, Wizards Defender. Stay with us for more of Sports Sunday right after this.